and welcome back down the workbench. Today we're taking a look at replacing the synchronous belt on the Toro Time Master mower. So if you've been mowing and you hear a loud snap, pop, and maybe a few sparks from under your deck, you may have broken the synchronous belt, which is this belt right here that synchronizes your two blades together. And so mine broke the other day and I ordered a replacement belt. And so now we're gonna replace that on this mower. So now I can add this to my series of Toro Time Master repairs. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do this repair. So the belt I went with for this project is a Stens belt. I found this on Amazon, uh, available for prime shipping. Unfortunately, the genuine Toro part was not available for prime shipping and I need to get a belt as quickly as I could to get my mower back in service. We flip this back over. The Toro part number is 1203335. This is part number 265610. This is much cheaper than a Toro part number. I have no idea what the quality of this is. I mean, it says guaranteed quality on it, but in terms of how it holds up, if we look at these belts side by side, with the uh, stems in the back, I mean, the Toro feels maybe a little more rigid. You can see from where, where this broke the fibers, there's no steel belting or steel ribs in here. I'm not sure if this is going to stretch more than what this one did or not. I don't know. Uh, check back in the comments below and I'll see if I can update those in a while if this is still holding up or not. Uh, but that's the belt I went with because I need to get my mower back in service. I obviously would have preferred to go with a genuine Toro belt. Genuine Toro belts are somewhere between, I don't know, 45 and 60 bucks depending upon your distributor. I think I paid maybe about 35 for this belt. I'll put a link to this below for the Amazon link, and I'll put an Amazon link for the genuine Toro belt, but because this had prime shipping, that's why I went with that, because I just needed to get my mower back in service. The tools needed for this repair are relatively simple. Number one, this is actually optional. It's some form of magnetic parts try to keep your screws organized. There's not that many screws, but it's better not to lose them, so a nice magnetic parts organizing tray is great for that. You're also going to want some form of a clamp to be able to clamp the blade activation bar in place so you can access behind the blade brake. Then you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket to be able to remove uh, several of the cover bolts. You may want an extension with that or you can use a deep well socket. Either way would work. Obviously a shorty, a, a Semi-deep would be too long to be able to get underneath the engine to get one of the other sets of bolts needed to be removed. I also want a ratch to do that with. I'm just going to use a quarter inch snap-on roto head ratchet here. For that with the 10 millimeter bolts, then there's a blade tensioning bolt we're going to have to adjust and we're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench. You don't actually need the ratchet end, just the box end of the wrench over here. And then we're going to use a socket, a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet at the other end. Now, because of the way that that is aligned up, a small round head ratchet is going to be nice just to help minimize clearance. The smaller the distance is around probably the top half of your ratchet to the anvil is going to be better. I'm just going to use this uh, round head ratchet for that and attach the 13 millimeter socket to the front of that. So overall, the tools are very simple. This repair will take maybe 10 to 15 minutes at most once you have all your parts and tools ready to go. So let's get back to the mower and let's get started. The very first thing you have to do to get started with this repair is gonna to be to remove this guard or this belt guard. You're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. Because of the recesses here, you're probably gonna to wanna to use a deep well socket. Well, uh, as I already talked about in the tools you're gonna to need for this repair, drop your 10 millimeter socket down Pop it off, there are four screws, one, two, three, and there's a fourth one back here. And once you get that off, and then you can see the mess under your mower deck, you may wanna clean it up and get out any other grass. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do, just to make sure when you're playing with the blades and you're working around the engine here, is to go ahead and remove your spark plug wire. Just like that. So now the engine can't run there's no risk of you accidentally getting the mower started or something else happening to it. So now we're completely safe on account of that. And so what you can do obviously is just pull the belt out. Pay attention to how this is run. 
This belt has a couple little quirks and oddities as it works its way around the two pulleys. This is one blade and this one over here is the other blade. You can see where these are geared, or I'm sorry, toothed pulleys and this belt obviously has uh, some teeth to it. And that's to make sure your blades stay in the proper sink so your blades don't strike each other. A striking set of blades is usually what actually alerts you that this may be a problem on your mower. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off. And your old belt comes off. And then we're going to have to get our new belt. But in order to get the new belt on, we're going to have to make some adjustments. So we're going to have to remove this guard here. This is the uh, drive belt that comes off the engine. There's a little shroud around that. So we're going to have to be able to get some access to this pulley to actually be able to get the belt on. So we're going to have to take care of that first. Using a standard depth 10 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove the belt guard around the engine drive belt. We'll take the belt and toss it into a magnetic parts tray. So in my parts tray, I've got bolts from the cover. I'll put this bolt here in the middle and we'll do the other side. That bolt comes out there and then this guard just slips right off like that. And then now we've got this belt here, with the mower disengaged and obviously off. We can, should be able to rub, pull that belt off just like that, no problem. So one of the next challenges for getting this belt on is right here is the blade brake. And that's going to impair this belt actually getting down and around this pulley here. So that's going to be important. So we have to be able to move this back. We've got some options. Either we can undo this lock nut here or we can go up to the user drive panel. So then if we come up to the top at the control panel here, we can take just a clamp. This is a Milwaukee spring clamp here. We can come around here and if we can be able to grasp and get this uh, blade engagement handle secured down and lock that down with a clamp like that. Now, you'll notice how our blade brake here is no longer in the way and we can drop our belt in place. So you can see where this now spins freely. There we go, we can just slide that right down. Watch your fingers around that blade brake area. And now this is where there's going to be a little bit of a dilemma here. We have to make sure our blades are in the proper location under the mower. So now, now that I'm all set to be able to make the connection on this belt on the other side, I'm going to double check under the mower. I've got the blades on and we're going to take a look at and see where the blade position is because we want to make sure that these blades are properly synchronized, hence the name a sink belt. So with the mower on its side, obviously I need to scrub out this deck here a little better, get the debris out. But we're going to want these blades approximately perpendicular to each other. One, when the drive blade is like this, have the other one 90 degrees to it. And so with that, I can kind of hold that in place. The blade brake is going to help hold this in the right place. And then we're just going to be able to wrap the belt around the other pulley there. So I'll go back on the other side of the mower while this mower is still on its side and get the belt set up on the other pulley. So now before I can get the belt around this pulley here, there's a tensioner puller, pulley here I need to be able to adjust and loosen the bolt here. So I'm going to use a 13 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter socket here to be able to loosen this up. So now with that loosened up, that will help allow more space for this belt to be able to wrap around our lower pulley. Double check your timing with the other side of the mower before proceeding. And now with the timing double checked on the blades and the extra tension taken off of that tensioner pulley there, we should just be able to wrap this belt right around the pulley here.
And if you need to use the blade on the back as leverage, you can do that. And there we go. The belt just snaps right on. Now we're going to go back and apply tension to be able to bring this tensioner back to where it was before. We'll use our 13 millimeter wrench and socket. Before we put this back in service and flip it over, we're going to want to make sure we double check our blade timing by simply rotating our blades in the cutting direction like this. Remember, we got our spark plug wire detached. You can see there's no contact here. As you're looking at these blades, you're going to know you probably want to double check for damage. You can see here there's definitely a strike from where this likely struck the other blade when the synchronous belt broke before. And so if you're replacing that synchronous belt because of it breaking, I would highly advise replacing these blades as well at the same time, just to make sure there's no other fatigue or any other metal issues related from that strike because of the speed of these mower blades. It's better to be safe than sorry. Go ahead and replace these blades. Obviously, if you're just replacing the synchronous belt just as a part of routine maintenance and not because of a break, uh, then you can probably skip that. But I'm gonna be replacing these blades as well as part of this. I'm not gonna include that in this video. That may be in a future video I'll put out separately but that's relatively straightforward. So now that I've verified the timing is correct, I'm gonna flip the mower back over. And now with the mower flipped back over, we still have this belt from the engine that needs to get reattached. Double check that it is still correct. So you can see I might have too much slack there. I'm gonna to to double check that. And so in this case, because this is actually off of the pulley, it might be hard to see on camera, but if you look straight back, there's a little blade uh, guard right here, and then the pulley is gonna be right back behind that. I'm gonna need to flip this back over to make sure I get that around there before I secure it right here in front. Now to double check that belt alignment, I can come back here. There may be some loose grass that you need to move out of the way. And there's two pulleys here, there's a bottom pulley and a top pulley, the bottom pulley is the transmission, the top pulley is for the blade drive. I'm gonna seat the belt right on that top pulley closest to the engine, come back around with the mower on its side, and now I'm just gonna reattach this belt like that. Now I should be good, and now I'll put the mower back over, and now with this belt correctly attached, I've got a little bit of slack here, not a lot, because this will engage now the next step is to finish putting stuff back together. So the next thing is going to be the guard for that. So that's just going to go on like that. I'll keep that belt on there. Took it off earlier. Now we just have to slide it back on. Start the nuts by hand. With this guard back in place, double check that your belt is entirely in all the pulleys correctly, just like shown here. You've got some tension here on the bolt. Looking at about an inch or so right here in spacing, depending upon the slack of your mower. It's right, double check that the teeth of this belt are correctly into the sprocketed gears there. You should have already checked the timing underneath the mower a couple times by now, just to make sure nothing binds. And then if that's all correct, then go ahead and put the cover back on. Once you have your engine cover back in place, the final bit is to reattach your spark plug. The obvious reason for that was when you're turning the engine there, make sure you don't accidentally start the engine. That would be a very unwelcome surprise. So if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up below. If you have any other questions or comments, put it in the comment section below. Look forward to seeing you back here for another video. And I've got a playlist of other Toro Time Master repair videos on this channel. I'll put a link to that playlist below as well, or maybe a card up in the corner. So I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye.